listening to PetLifeRadio.com. It's a Doggy Dog World is brought to you by Pet Care Rx, America's most affordable pet pharmacy. Pet Care Rx offers the same meds as top vets, but with a savings up to 50%. And if you find a lower price on a certified EPA and FDA approved medication, Pet Care Rx will match that price. So go to PetCareRx.com. Use promo code DOGWORLD10. D O G W O R L D, the number 10, and receive $10 off orders of $50 or more. It's a big world out there, and you're just looking for a pat on the back or head. You run around the city, searching for a place to bark, working your tail off with your nose to the ground, sniffing for a few scraps, hoping someone will throw you a bone. You take each lead, collar after collar, hoping one day to take a bite out of success and become the top dog. Fortunately, you come home each day to open arms, open cans, a drink waiting for you, and a comfortable place in front of the TV set. You know you've got it good, really good, because after all, it's a doggy dog world out there. Pet Life Radio presents It's a Doggy Dog World with your host, pet expert, and award winning author, Liz Palaika, and this week's co hosts, Kate Abbott and Petra Burke. Hi, welcome to It's a Doggy Dog World. I'm your host, Liz Palaika, and with me today are my good friends, Petra Burke. Hello. And Kate Abbott. I do. And today we're talking about summertime dangers and ways to keep your dog comfortable in the summer. I know it's a little early yet. It's just May going on into June. But in a lot of areas of the country, including here in Southern California, it's starting to heat up already. Well, I don't know. Looking at Kate, you got a scarf and a oh, sweatshirt well. on. But that, <laughs> but that's because she, that's because she has no blood. Yes. Well, I'm always donating it <laughs> to my wood shop. So anyway, we're going to talk about ways to keep your dog safe in the summertime because there's a lot of dangers. I mean, we've got foxtails and ticks and hot asphalt that burns dogs' pads and all kinds of stuff that can make your dog uncomfortable or hurt or even worse. So hang on, take a listen to our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Sit. Stay. It's a doggy dog world. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. It's a doggy dog world is brought to you by Petco.com. Petco is a leading specialty retailer of premium pet food supplies and services, offering more than 10,000 high-quality pet-related products. Enter the code DOGGY10, D-O-G-G-Y, the number 10, and get 10% off any order. No minimum at Petco.com. There's a movement afoot, ShoeBuy.com. Join the millions of people who shop ShoeBuy.com's over 400 brands and 500,000 products. Order now and get free shipping and free return shipping. ShoeBuy.com, the world's greatest shoe store. Walk your dog in style and comfort. Enter the code DOGGY, D-O-G-G-Y, at checkout and get a 10% discount plus free shipping at ShoeBuy.com. Love your pets but wish their medications were a lot less expensive? They are at 1-800-PET-MEDS. You'll not only save on flea and heartworm medications, but on prescriptions for arthritis, incontinence, thyroid, and more. And you get fast service, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Plus, our licensed pharmacists ensure accuracy, monitor drug interaction, and more. See why over 5 million people have trusted their pet's health to 1-800-PET-MEDS, America's largest pet pharmacy. Call now or order online. Go to PetMeds.com forward slash world, W-O-R-L-D, to get 10% off any order and free shipping on orders of $39 or more at PetMeds.com. Hi, and welcome to The Family Pet on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Colleen Safford. Each week, we'll focus on different topics, child pet safety, child pet training, just how to make an appropriate pet selection for your family. All of these things will be covered in each one of our episodes. So we hope that you will join us at The Family Pet on Pet Life Radio. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. 
Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. We know you're begging for more. So back to It's a Doggy Dog World with your fetching hosts, Liz Palaika and this week's co-hosts, Kate Abbott and Petra Burke. Welcome back to It's a Doggy Dog World. Petra, Kate, and I today are talking about summertime dangers. And then in the second half of the program, talking about ways to keep your dog comfortable in the summer. And we've all got black dogs. I mean, Kate has Rottweiler and Black Cockapoo, and I've got three black Aussies, and Petra's got two black Aussies, and then several brown dogs. I mean, you know, you t- yeah. <laughs> discriminate, but... Yeah, I know. <laughs> but they have coats so they do get hot. So. Yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. We've all got coated dogs. Yep. One of the things that we've seen so far this year and seen early this year are foxtails. You know, I've decided that that's my bad word of the year, foxtails. Well, you've had trouble with them with <laughs> Teddy, the German Shepherd, previously. Yeah, Teddy gets still does. Gets them in his big old paws because I, I swear he's like a Brillo pad. It all just kind of sucks into his paws. So we're constantly going through his coat and going through his feet and using tweezers and pulling them out every night. Well, the latest one is Kona. Which was a surprise. Total surprise. Never had a problem. He's my 10-year-old Aussie. And I couldn't figure out why he just wasn't doing the happy bark. And he kind of seemed moping around and just seemed uncomfortable. Well, and the last time you brought him to the yard, one cheek was a little swollen. Yeah, yeah. So it didn't look right. So I brought him to the vet and we're looking. I see, you know, abscess tooth, something. We're looking all in there. And then I remember she pulled the cheek way, way back at her gum joint. Way, way back there, her uh, the jaw. Saw something dark, pulled out with tweezers, and there was foxtails. Uh, now stuck in his back of his jaw and in his uh, mm-hmm. in his gum. Yeah, in his gum, way back there, just both sides. Um, so of course he went back the next day. It's the day to um, clean, did a teeth cleaning, and uh, cleaned out and all a the gum box. cleaning. <laughs> yeah, major gum cleaning. So of course we have to give uh, Petra and Kona their kudos because. The initial examination, the vet and the vet techs kept saying, he's such a good boy oh. letting us open his mouth and poke around in there and it hurts. Yep. And he didn't. And of course, out. Kona's the one for regular listeners to know that Kona's the blind. blind. One. Yeah, he's my he, blind boy. He, he has three different eye defects and can't <laughs> see a, a thing. So blind dog on the vet table without sedation. Being poked and prodded and... On a sore mouth. On a, a sore, sore mouth, mouth. yeah. Yeah, yeah they, just, they, they just could not say enough about how good he was. Yeah. But, um, I mean, we cleaned it out. He's good. He's on the mend. He got some sores from it, um, antibiotics. But now he's on the patio on cement only. To, you know, we if he walks out to do his business, you brush him out with a comb. But uh, it's even no more... No more eating grass. And no more no. munching on the grass. Yeah, we thought we could think of it as not realizing what he was munching because he can't see it. I'm not sure, but to have that much, he had to have been eating it. Oh, yeah. Well, and just the other day, uh, our therapy dog group, we had gone to a visit at a nursing home, and then we went to a pet dog-friendly outside patio luncheon, and one of the members turned to me and goes, a vet just came to our kennel club and did a talk on foxtails. She sounds awful. What do they look like? Yeah. She didn't even know what one was. Oh, I know. In the vet's office, when I went to pick up Kona, they, uh, there was a lady who walked in there and didn't know what a fox till was. And I started just kind of laughing as I was getting, you know, paying my left arm, right leg. You know, <laughs> that's the vet. Um, but uh, I just said, oh, well, it's just not a pleasant thing. <laughs> well, I got up from the patio table. And I walked maybe 50 feet over to yeah. an empty field. Make it lot. And I said, look, here we've got brand new coming up we've got old and dry these are the uh-huh. nasty stuff and here's it so for people that don't know what a foxtail is it's there's just... grass seeds the grass grows and it puts up a shoot and it's the way the grass reproduces puts out the seeds and they look almost like well it's a primitive a... wild wheat right that's what i was going to yeah, say an we, ear yeah. of wheat mm-hmm. right and as it dries, as it, as it ripens, they turn brown and then they individually fall off and they have a pointed end and they have barbs. So it only moves one direction. So if it gets caught in the dog's coat or between his pads, it moves in. And every time the dog moves, it works its way in. Mm-hmm. And Kate and I, both having been vet techs in previous lives, 
know that they can work their way in anywhere, not just anywhere. the jaws, but up a dog's leg, into his abdomen. Ears, nostrils, Ears. we've heard all yes. that. People at the table started telling their foxtail horror stories. Of the, the foxtail that went in through the bottom of the pad and actually, thank goodness, came out the top. Rather yeah. than working its way up, up the, the leg. leg. I had this woman then feel the pieces that I had picked and said, okay, now stroke it from the tip back. Oh, it's nice and smooth. Now try to go the other way. Uh-huh. Yeah, she's it's like, barbed. Oh. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. they're very, very tiny barbs, but that just keeps it working one, it's a one-way arrow. Wow. One way. Yep. Nasty things. And I remember the veterinarian that I worked for, we had a dog come in who had an unknown abdominal problem, but was very, very sick to the point that he said, look, we've got to do an exploratory. And when he opened that dog up, apparently wherever the dog liked to lay out in the yard, there were foxtails and he had five or six of them that were just simply working their way through the dog's abdomen. And, and several had punctured. Frustrating surgery oh. because the foxtails don't show up on radiographs or x-rays. And you don't know what you're gonna find. You just have to go in there and try mm -hmm. to follow this bizarre path. Not straight line. No. But wandering but, path. But path of damage. Yep. And uh, two had already perforated the the intestinal wall. Wow. So he was a really, Sexist. really sick dog. Yeah. Luckily, most of them get caught before that point, and most of them are in the feet and mm -hmm. the and the legs, I think. Oh, there was that day I saw. I noticed that Walter was shaking his head and sneezing, and I grabbed his mustache, and I managed to grab the end of a foxtail just going up his nose. Right. Oh, right. And I pull it out oh. in that moment. Yeah. Yeah. But if it had gotten a little bit further in, I would have been, it, you know, it would have been gone. Yeah. 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 So it happens quickly. I just brush out your dog, keep an eye. If the eye just say, if they act weird, investigate right away. Yeah. Like, Walters, you saved that from going well, up. Well, you've got such a large property, uh -huh. but now you're creating an area for Kona exactly. to be in. Exactly. And then one for Teddy here shortly. And yeah. If you've yeah. got a smaller yep. area, get rid of those suckers. Yeah. Much, yeah. I got rid of the grass in my backyard. One to save water. Yeah. To be politically correct in Southern San California. San Diego is a desert. Yes. But the other thing uh, is that got rid of all grass seeds because yeah. I was also finding burr clover. Yeah. yeah. The birds would fly into my willow tree and take a poop and drop burr clover seeds. Mm -hmm. So I was getting Which burr clover. Which is annoying and so forth. They're just not as damaging. Not as, as dangerous. But another one that's dangerous is those little spiral ones. Oh, gosh, I have those. And I'm digging out of the Pomeranian's coats every yeah, night. Yeah, they, they... I spend my dog days, evenings, brushing <laughs> dogs these days. <laughs> Oh my God! Well, you know, there's clippers. They can be naked. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking about that. I'll save a lot of time. Well, when I do groom Walter, I do groom uh, the underside of his ear and down a little bit, so there's less fur for anything to get caught in and work mm -hmm. its way. Well, inside. and I keep the Aussie's feet clean, yeah. in between the pads and up to the ankle, so that I can see. And then, of course, around the genitalia and the, mm -hmm. you know, Any spot that might get. That might be a brillo pad, like right? Teddy yeah, and right, exactly. Now, the summertime also brings the insects, right. <laughs> fleas, and ticks, and mosquitoes. mosquitoes. Well, and they just on our local news station talked about we're having a banner year for black widow spiders in San Diego. County. Yeah, you know, I haven't seen as knock on wood, yeah, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't seen as many. Well, uh, Molly. Have I. True, Miss True. Molly is this is her second year of getting a spider, she's a Lovely, elegant, dignified, dignified white standard poodle, therapy dog extraordinaire. This is her second year of getting a spider bite um, on her throat, just below her chin. I want to know where she lays and puts her head. You know, I think it's going out into the ice plant bank and pushing down into there to, to sniff for critters and things. Oh, because it seems mm. funny that both times have been... On her neck, under her chin. Yeah. Both relatively same area. Just poke it in there, but, and then it abscessed. And oh, yeah. Just... Well, my dad years ago got stung by a black widow, and he got sick. He yeah. got really sick. Yeah, they can so be nasty. It can affect the dogs just like us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bee stings. Oh, yeah, well. <laughs> Pedro has the story on that one. Keely almost died twice, twice with bee Twice the bee sting, exactly. We had those lovely uh, Africanized, Africanized bees that stung our Oh, call know. them killer bees. That's what they are. Killer bees. <laughs> I know. So we did have to resuscitate her the first time using a Starbucks straw. 
<laughs> intubator. <laughs> hey, it worked great. But the second time, I think we caught it enough and had put a Benadryl and rushed her over. So she didn't go in, to, you know, she didn't stop breathing or anything. But yeah. Still mighty sick. But so yeah. foxtails and bees, they, they can just put a bubble around my house. Yeah. <laughs> well, and Bashir was silly enough to snap at a bee and got stung on his tongue. That's right. And I shoved uh, two Benadryl down his throat immediately, but I couldn't get the stinger out because it took two hands to open his mouth and the stinger was in the middle of his tongue. So I rushed straight to the vet, called him, said we were on the way. And again, thanks to social handling training, I was able to hold his mouth open and the veterinarian said, well, we're going to have to sedate him. And I said, no, you won't. I'll hold him. And she goes, but I have to do surgery with these fingers. And I said, he won't bite you. I will hold him. And sure enough, she was able to get it out. And Oh, I love kindred spirits dogs. <laughs> <laughs> but his tongue was already about an inch thick. If I hadn't have gotten the Benadryl down him, that yeah. would have been horrible. Yeah. Horrible. Cutting so a good hint, everyone, if your dog is... In, the least bit allergic, or you even think he's allergic, or he thinks about snapping at spiders or bees, keep Benadryl on hand. And the Definitely. dosage is, straight from my veterinarian, one milligram per pound of body weight. So Bashir was 50 pounds, and I gave him two Benadryl immediately. But if your dog is going into anaphylactic shock, like Keeley was, another Benadryl will not hurt him, and it might save his life. Yeah, we use those strips. That's why I did it right. Keeley. And the dis uh, dissolving, dissolving strips. strips. Then, you, strips yeah. then you don't have to get them down the throat if they're They just need to make those able to open a little faster. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, try to open those suckers. They put them in a metal foil. Yeah, it's yeah it won't rip. So they don't Works dry out, great, but, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now, fleas and ticks, I think, are a little easier to deal with nowadays with the, yeah. the new preventatives. It's sure yeah. a lot easier Did than fleas. Did take a tick off of... the dog the other day in class. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and I think I still think it's important to get the ticks off soon to inspect them. But mm -hmm. uh, the new preventatives, systemics, do kill them more quickly, exactly. which is good. All right, other dangers. <laughs> Be careful when you're removing the tick that you get everything. Don't leave that head behind. Oh, that's... There's a lot of information out there about how to remove a tick safely. Be familiar with it. Yes, definitely. Forget the matches and the Vaseline and all that. It's just steady pulling in one direction. Either mm -hmm. tweezers or forceps or good fingernails. And don't worry about getting a little pinch of the skin. If you pinch off a little bit of the skin, you're more likely to get the head. If the head's left, it's going to abscess, yep. definitely. All right, let's move on. How about the car? As much as our dogs love to go mm -hmm. for a ride in the car, the car can be deadly in the summer. You know, I was you know, just thinking this time of year, it feels cool outside, but it if you have if you close up your car and you go in there, it's incredible how hot it is, yet it just, feels yeah, much cooler. This afternoon, a friend and I went off in her uh, small van, and we went into the hardware store. We were probably in there in about an hour. And it's what? In the 70s. High, uh, high 60s, low 70s yeah. today. Nice yeah. breeze. It's a lovely day. But the sun is shining. But the sun is shining. We came back to her savannah. was all closed up. And, and there was she, no dog in it. She has it. Right. She has it. We definitely left them at home because of that. She has a thermometer that she has got for her car. Because it shows the current temperature and then the minimum and the maximum in the last 24 hours. And it had shown a minimum of 65 from being in shade and cool and so forth. But when we came back after only an hour, it was already up to 94, 96. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. On a nice cool day that I'm wearing a jacket and a, yeah, and a good scarf around my neck. She's wearing a scarf on the high 60s. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's amazing how fast a car will heat up. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, it wasn't hot, hot, but it was like, whoa, a noticeable enough, change from outside. And if you're not paying attention, it, it can trick you. You're yeah. thinking, oh, my dog will be okay for that 15 Well, or and so, it's but... easy to get distracted. Oh, let me look at this. Oh, let yes. me look at that. The dog's fine. The breeze is blowing. It's cool. Yeah. Let me look at this. Yeah. Which actually, that conversation got us all started about how many times we've seen dogs locked in cars and whether we've called the cops or not or yeah. uh, broke into the car or let the dog out. I, I admit happened. I've never broken into the car yet myself, but I have gone back to stores and had people page. Yep, I've done that. And I have called the police twice. Yep. Not that they've responded quickly, but usually if I have somebody paged and say, 
Please let them know the law says I can't break their window, and if someone doesn't arrive back out here in five minutes, I will break the window. There you that go. usually brings them out real quick. There They're you usually go. pissed, but then I give them my business card and say, sorry, I'm just concerned about dogs. Yeah. Uh, yep, exactly. So, but, well, that leads to another thing. Let's talk about signs of heat exhaustion or heat stroke and, and what happens. Well, first thing I think is... Uh, news to a lot of people is that dogs don't sweat like humans do. They sweat through their pads and they pant. And they pant. So they need cool air around them to pant, to cool down their mouth and get so forth. So if you don't get that in a locked car that's 98 mm. or 102 or whatever, so they're not getting any heat exchange. Right. That's why cars can be so much more dangerous than outside on a hot day. Um, so some signs. Uh, I mean, obviously a dog can just collapse. I saw it once on a uh, one of those raise money for the Humane Society dog walks. Oh, yeah. Very humid day. And they were young dogs who didn't know to conserve. And they were bouncing around and all that, blah, 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 blah. And then they got tired real quick and overheated. Then they were being carted away from the dog walk on uh, the... Fortunately, they had uh, golf, golf carts. carts. Yeah. And they were calling these people and their dogs away because the dogs were collapsing. So a dog will actually just collapse when they get to a bloody diarrhea they might start vomiting now capillary refill time is probably don't want to go into now but it's another test to see how dog talk about their blood circulation <laughs> they can just act sort of drunk or in a stupor um disoriented get a glazed eye look in the eyes panting They'll or, or panting a lot or even stop panting and that's even scarier mm -hmm. when a, a dog that's warm stops panting they're starting to shut down. So excessive right. panting and the spatulate tongue, you want yes, to explain the, that? Spatulate tongue is when the dog's panting and the last third of his tongue looks like a spatula or a big spoon. It expands and the tongue thins. He, what he's trying to do is get more air over more tongue surface. And when the dog's tongue is that big and that round, that means there's a problem. He's overheated, he's overstressed, he's overexertion. And he needs to get some water and cool quickly. Then the color of the gums and the tongue and increased salivation. So, and that's a good point you made though. It's sometimes it's just heat. Sometimes it's heat and exertion. And stress. Mm -hmm. Or stress. Yeah. So that dog walk, they were stressed. Yeah. They were overexcited. They were overexerting for the temperature of that day. Right. And it wasn't a very hot day, just a humid. Well, and we've been watching muggy that day. with our Saturday classes. Sure, we do our little when they come out in the yard and practice their commands. Is we keep it short and sweet and say, "Okay, now go give them some water." And, and even, even if they just, don't want to drink, run water over off. their mouth, uh -huh. have them step in the water, splash water on their belly. Yep. And people are like, "No, it's fine." No, trust me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But even a dog just laying around in a backyard, not doing anything, if it's out in the sun. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, you know how so many dogs like to lay in the sun and bake their bones? I For mean, a heck, while. I like to do that too. But then yeah. at a certain point, they need to cool off. So the car is bad. So what do you do if your dog starts getting overheated? You want to cool down the parts that they use the most to cool themselves down. Their paws, their mouth. Their your belly. Dog and their belly. Mm -hmm. For uh, That's where all the capillaries are for right. exchange. So People want to dump water on their dog's head. Like you do well, on, the back. Like, on the back. Mostly. Yeah. Most no. of the most of their coats are waterproof. The water's gonna run right off. And yep. plus if you have a dark dog, the water's gonna start evaporating off that black coat and create it. steam. Exactly. And he's gonna get hotter. Yep. So the mouth, the paws, the belly, the face. We watch our dogs out here. So when they're out running around and you know not downtime. They run around chasing balls. They get overheated. We laugh at them because they'll go drink some water and then they'll put their front paws in it. Yeah. Or their whole body and just lay down there. The whole yeah, body well, the can. Pomeranians and the Rottweiler <laughs> lay down in it. Yeah. yeah. The Aussies don't. It's icky. <laughs> yeah. But they drink and they put their paws in it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And even if they're not, they're not drinking so much to refill fluids like we do because we sweat, but to keep the mouth cool. Right. But you don't want to send your dog into shucks. If you pull them out of a hot car and they're already glazed over and having difficulty, you put ice water on them, oh, you God. can shock them the other way. It, yes. Exactly. But running cool water over them, if you can find a hose or, or a, a water faucet, running cool water over them. And then get him to a vet. 
Yeah. Exactly. Get him to a vet. Even if you cool him off and he appears okay, get him to a vet. Because some problems aren't going to show up until later. The American Red Cross um, first aid for pets is talking about um, showing up. Uh, some of these conditions can be not even show up for hours or even days. Yeah, 24 to 48 after, hours. After a heat problem. So the potential problems can include abnormal heart rhythms, destruction of the digestive tract lining. Yeah, bloody That's diarrhea. That's awful. Mm -hmm. yeah. bloody, or bloody vomiting. Either yeah. way, coming up. Kidney failure. Neurological problems, seizures caused by swelling of the brain and other problems, problems with blood clotting, and then respiratory arrest. To think that that could show up a day or two after you think you've already taken care of it, it's worth checking now. Oh, definitely. Go to the vet and get it taken definitely. care of. Definitely. All right, on that less than positive <laughs> note, <laughs> moving on, another problem that two of our trainers had problems <laughs> with already this spring is hot pavement. You know, and I think it's a common issue whether it's hot pavement or, I mean, these guys had a few months of where it's been, we've had rainy Rain, weather. And their pads are soft. Exactly. So first yeah. it's hot, then the pads are soft, so they haven't built that nice hardness Tough. yet. And so they get blisters or even to a point where the blisters break and then it's got a raw spot. So yeah. I know with uh, with one, it was she was playing ball with her dogs out on the street. Mm -hmm. Right. And thinking that if if anything was hurting, the dogs would stop. No, no. they were too into the game. Well, oh, and yeah. especially Aussies. Yeah. They're not going to stop. No. They'd be running on bloody stumps if they could still mm -hmm. catch a ball. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. They and then the cool. other one, she was introducing her dog to the Springer on the bicycle. Uh. And she thought she was taking it nice and slow. But he was a young dog. And again, soft pads. Yep. And his two front pads got blistered. So you do have to... Keep an eye on those pads. Yes, with an older dog that's been out a lot, they're nice and tough. But with a cold winter, with mm -hmm. a wet winter, everything soft and gushy, we got to toughen them up again. Exactly. I have a backyard pool, and we often have dog pool parties, and some dogs with nice, tough pads, but they're in and out of the pool. And it's soft. Now, and the side, <laughs> the uh, surround, the concrete surround is coated with a substance so it doesn't get real hot. But it's still a non-slick slip surface. Right. And the dogs are having fun. They're running, they're jumping, they're running, they're jumping, they're getting in and it's out. It's kind of like soft, paws. soft pads running on sandpaper. And that, and we've been amazed at the number of dogs that have shown up with uh, bloody paws until yeah. I started, you know, okay, time for a break. Let's yeah. check paws. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Well, Bashir exactly. did the first time he yeah. was there. He was young. He was he was an older puppy. And, uh, yeah, he, he tore his feet up. You remember yep. the friends Chesapeake? We learned to uh, put booties on him when he come, came over to swim. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we'll have to take a break. Those are some of the common problems that we see often in the summertime heat. When we come back after a word from our sponsors, let's talk about some things we can do to keep your dog safe in the summertime. So hang on, take a listen to our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Sit. Stay. It's a doggy dog world. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. FTD's network of over 40,000 florists around the world have been creating beautiful handcrafted arrangements for 100 years. Each arrangement is delivered the same day and backed by FTD's seven-day satisfaction guarantee. For a century, people have trusted their most important occasions to the flower experts at FTD. Since Pet Life Radio is all about puppy dogs and flowers, our listeners, that's you, can get a 20% discount on your order. Just go to florop.com and use the code DOGGYDOG at checkout. F-L-E-U-R-O-P.com. Code word D-O-G-G-Y-D-O-G. Where have you been? Oh, Grandma, I've been busy, you know. Racing, GoDaddy girl. Oh, I built my own online store with GoDaddy. Really? Let me see. Grandma'sauction.com. Hey, aren't those Grandpa's golf clubs? Grandma needs her bingo money. Use promo code DOGGY10, D-O-G-G-Y, the number 10, and get a .com domain name for just $7.49 at GoDaddy.com. If you ask the 
question What do I want? What do I need? I'll take affection I really should mention I need time I need love I crave attention Will your dog have a bone to pick with you tomorrow? Is your cat planning a hissy fit? Follow the dog star to Pet Life Radio for Lucky Stars. Our weekly pet horoscopes. Whether your retriever's a believer or your Pekingese disagrees, this is the place to find out what the stars hold for your favorite furry friend. So pull up a crystal ball every week with your host, international pet astrologer, and earth, fire, water, and air, Dale, Lucky. Only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. We know you're begging for more. So back to It's a Doggy Dog World with your fetching hosts, Liz Palaika and this week's co-hosts, Kate Abbott and Petra Burke. Welcome back to It's a Doggy Dog World. Kate, Petra, and I, in this podcast, are talking about summertime dangers and things that we can do to keep your dog safe. In the first half of the show, we talked about some of the things we've run into so far this summer. Foxtails, little twisty grass Spirals that catch in your dog's coat. Ticks and bees and <laughs> spiders. Bugs. Bugs. <laughs> hot cars. Hot pavement. Those are some very common things that we don't often think about. And we need to keep in our thoughts of, about our dog's safety. But now let's talk about how to keep our dogs safe. One thing we do here in the training yard is we get kitty pools. Little plastic $10 Kitty pools that we can fill with water so during class the dogs can take a break and, and cool off. Mm-hmm. Not just to get a drink, but to cool off. They'll get in it and play in it. Or it, my Rottweiler likes to lay in it and writhe around like a sea serpent. Um, <laughs> it's so but, cute. Well, Petra's <laughs> Pomeraniums <laughs> she immerse themselves. In the water bowls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she just goes in a water bowl. <laughs> yeah, and, and then little Benji's starting to do it. Caught him in the water bowl. Well, they've got so much coat. Yeah. They've got to be hot under that. I mean, six inches of coat. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Thinking that's coming off soon. (laughs) And actually, we could have a lot of fun uh, just putting a sprinkler on the end of a hose and letting the dogs play in there. That's Uh Riker's favorite game in the world. Attack the sprinkler. (laughs) And he'll pick it up and carry it around. And and at home, when I have the kiddie pool the Aussies aren't as prone to going in the kiddie pool as your guys but if I take a chunk of ice Mm -hmm. and float it in the pool Mm -hmm. or better yet I'll take a handful of baby carrots and toss them out in the kiddie pool and that'll get all three of the Aussies in and uh, get their front feet in and get water going over their mouth because they're dunking for the the baby carrots Uh, slices of apple will work to get them into the kiddie pool. So I'm responsible. And when we had the responsible dog owner day, we had a game where we'd uh, drop dunking dog for, biscuits in. Dunking for oh, dog yeah. biscuits. Exactly. But you can't leave those in because they turn yeah, into mush. That's true. That's true. <laughs> if the dog gets them right away, it's good. But if you're leaving to go to work and you want the dog going into the pool later to cool off, uh, the apple slices. And or the, if your dog likes uh, ice cubes. Ice cubes. Yeah, chunks ooh, of ooh. ice cubes. And you could do a Martha Stewart where you freeze ice cubes with stuff in it for the yes. dogs. Oh, there you yes. go. Yes. Well, you gave me that contraption yeah. last yeah. year or the year before. I made it not with the stuff they suggested, but I made it with baby carrots. Okay. And that was great. It made this, I swear it was a huge chunk. It, it was, was a, a good chunk. 
couple of quarts bucket that you would yeah. fill. The whole idea was you could make this I, popsicle for your right, books. Right, right. And a stand, you could put it in the ground so it uh-huh. would stay fairly clean. Although I put it in the kitty pool. <clears throat> ah, okay. Yeah. There you go. But the trick was, as it starts to freeze, you have to stir it a few times because all the baby carrots come to the top. So you put it in, and as the water starts to get semi-frozen, you stir it up, and the baby carrots move all around. And then as it freezes some more, you stir it again. But then when it thaws in the kiddie pool, little bits of baby carrots start to show up, and the dogs start licking on it or chewing on it. And, of course, they have to stand with their front feet in the kiddie pool to get to it. So it it was wonderful for help. Talk cool about a way to keep them busy for a long oh, time. Oh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, exactly. last year when uh, Archer was a puppy, yeah, he he was out there for a long time working on that sucker. Actually, well, it would take longer. But back to Martha Stewart. Yeah. <laughs> because I I fr- frozen lemon slices for decorative for the table. Oh yes. Um, <laughs> for ice uh, for shrimp. Oh, okay, boy. that's a whole other side of it. But anyway. <laughs> Did you visualize that? I didn't visualize that. <laughs> Freezing layers. <laughs> Put just a little bit of water or water and your carrots in and let that freeze and then add another layer and then uh, just over time. I'm not I sure I'm not sure I have that much time to devote to it, but okay. yeah. <laughs> Coming right. back to it a couple times and stirring it is one thing. <laughs> Did you boil the water first so that it was clear? No. Was... <laughs> no. No. Oh boy. That's it, a whole nother it was <laughs> It was water from the tap, and yeah. it was opaque. Okay. All right. The carrots showed up oh, when it melted. No. Yeah. <laughs> All I, I wanted them to see the lemon slices against the outside of the ice. Okay, anyway. So, um, <laughs> wow, so you know, water, that. keeping it fun for them, keeping them interested in going over to it, and... The nice thing about an ice ice block is it keeps the water cool too. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then shade, shade. Let's not forget shade, folks. Yeah, I've got a curly willow tree in my backyard that I absolutely adore. My husband hates it because it's messy, but he doesn't have to do the yard work. So there. <laughs> I agree. But I swear, it's ten degrees cooler under that tree in the summer. Oh yeah. In July oh, and August, when it's hot. You step under that tree in the shade, and it's easily 10 degrees cooler. And the dogs do enjoy laying underneath it, right. which is, is fun. And I think the other one is really nice is shade cloth, because it does mm-hmm. give nice cool, but you also have a breeze. Sure. A lot of times just having a something solid uh-huh. will give you the shade, but then... But it cuts off the air. Yeah, there's no air, and then it's, it's still hot in the shade. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you want the air flow as mm-hmm. much as possible. Mm-hmm. When we just took the trip to Florida, if you guys noticed, of course, the screened-in porches and the backyards oh, is yeah. the only way you can live with the bugs. Right? Yeah. But how many of those um, have fans yeah. out yeah. there just to circulate? The air. Well, of course, it's yeah, so exactly. humid back there, too. Sure. Yep. Yep. But, but it's uh, just air movement. So yeah. if you could figure mm-hmm. out some kind of outside fan or something, mm-hmm. or at mm-hmm. least allowing the air to come through. Exactly. Yeah. That's a great idea. How about when to feed your dog when it's hot? My guys don't get fed until the evening when I come home from our sure. classes here. Exactly. Same because here. during the day when it's hot, a lot of times the dogs lose their appetite. Mm-hmm. Or then they've had their big meal of the day and they're laying around like a bloated whale <laughs> and don't feel good. Exactly. Yeah, and I do. I like to. I like to feed my dogs twice a day, so they get in the early, a light early morning when it gets hot, and then the bigger meal later on, after it cools off. Yeah, and then uh, the time for exercise. I walk my Let's dogs. Go out at high noon. I can't well, believe we, how but, many people we see do that. Though. Exactly, and we've had a horror story. It was a year yeah. or two ago. Somebody's oh. friend was watching their dog. Oh, her dog American sitting. Bulldog yeah. and it had no. It was not in any physical shape to go jogging. It took him in the jogging heat of the day. in the heat of the day, and the dog died. The dog died, and she was devastated. Yeah. Absolutely devastated. Uh, he was a young dog. He was what a year and a half. Yeah. A year, year and a half. He was young, but first, uh, not in the heat of the day. And second, make sure your dog is, work them up. They're physically fit to do something. Like us. You're not going to go out there and do a five-mile run. Not me. <laughs> not me. <laughs> Ain't going to happen. But and I'm definitely yourself... not going to do it at noon. And then, you know, like everything, you work yourself into getting My dogs condition. and I do either go for a walk or go for a bike ride, but we do it in the morning. And even though mm-hmm. I'm not a morning person, 
when it gets warmer, like it is now, it's starting to get warmer, we go out earlier. And in July, August, September, here in Southern California, that means we're out about 7.30 in the morning. I hate it, but it's the safe time to go. Yeah. Still, if we lived in Florida, we'd be out at 6. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, or 10 o'clock um, at night. <laughs> when the bulldog is another good point. If you've got a short-nosed breed type of dog. Yes. From pug to mastiff to whatever, mm-hmm. you've got to be extra careful. Yes. Oh yeah, extra careful about the heat and exertion and the humidity. And the humidity. Mm-hmm. When uh, Paul and I were taking care of uh, the Marine Corps mascot bulldog, Chesty, uh, we actually had a room air conditioner for one room, and in June, July, August, September, uh, back in Virginia, when it was hot and humid, he was in that room. The rest of us were out in the rest of the house, but when it was that hot and humid, he was in that room, and he'd actually asked to go back there. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sure when he got uncomfortable and it was hard to breathe, he would go back there. Well, you know, when they sell those cool jackets now for dogs. Sure. As well. I've been hearing some good good reports about those. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like the idea. Yeah. They're getting better and better. It used to be kind of a... Like a not, wet towel. Not much better than a wet, wet towel, towel right. over your dog. Yeah. But yeah. now they've got new But now the dog's and... not wet, but the, the, the blanket itself or the coat, what do you want to call it, is it, nice and cool. Yeah. So. And booties. The booties for walking on hot pavement. Yes. I really like those. Yeah. yeah those In fact, good. I was going to mention them to our two trainers who, whose dogs hurt their feet, that we might want to mention those to them. We should mm-hmm. probably make a group order. Yeah, we, mm-hmm. we should. Well, and I'm biking my guys now, so... And take yeah. some time to get them used to the booties. They do tend to act like a cat that's just had a bath and can't move. Yes. But they can get used to them quite quickly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yep. And that, for those of you that live in an area with snow, that's going to double duty. Oh, definitely. Or um, even if there's not a lot of snow, if they put salt on the roads. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Remember, when again, when Paul and I were back in Virginia, we... We were Californians. We didn't know anything about the dogs burning their feet on the salt. One of our neighbors was kind enough to tell us, you know, hey, are you washing your dog's feet when you bring them inside? And we're going, oh, it, it's snow. It's wet. Why do we? It'll melt. Well, you know, why do we have to wash their feet? And he said, the salt burns. And I, oh. Yeah. And I wish I'd had them on my dogs when I went. It was a nice, cool day, not to any heat. And they were in good condition. It was a soft trail, but I found out later that that soft trail was pumice. Which, oh, oh just pets and pets. And pets. It, they oh, came back oh, with oh. swollen, blistered feet. Oh. In fact, I had to carry them out of the hiking trail. Oh. Because they were walking on pumice. Which is abrasive. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. There's stuff out there. And the dogs yeah. don't complain until it gets to a bad point. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because they want to be out there with us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Well, hopefully we've provided some food for thought. I'm sure most of you've heard about uh, foxtails before, but I bet you didn't know they could get caught in your dog's <laughs> jaws. And I'm sure, you know, we're all aware of the heat, but there's always things that perhaps we don't think about. When Kate was talking today about the temperature variance in the car, I was thinking, I want to get one of those thermometers. Mm-hmm. I want a 25 one 25 that... degree difference. Yeah, 25 Easy. degree oh, yeah. difference, especially on a day that wasn't that hot. And my van is big. It's got a lot of airspace, and it's got a lot of windows for aeration. But uh, I... Aeration. Airflow. Airflow. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I want to get one of those. I want to know exactly how warm it does get. Yeah. So... That, that'll be a good investment. We did see that at the Pit Expo, too. It's an interesting, for hatchback cars, uh-huh. a way that you could crack the hatchback open at the bottom and yet still lock it. Yeah, yeah. So somebody oh, could right. pull it open all the way. Right. Yeah. That, oh, yeah. So that was kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, in your pickup truck, you've got those metal, vinyl-covered metal shelves that go across the windows so right. that uh, somebody can't break in through the screen, but yet you can open can it. I open. thought that was a, a great mm-hmm. idea. Yeah. And one thing that Liz mentioned earlier, if you've got somebody new in your neighborhood or new to dog ownership, share with them. You may be aware of salt on the the roads and foxtails in the area. 
But here's a woman who's had her dog for two or three years and didn't even know what a foxtail was. Sure. You mm -hmm. have an experienced dog owner but had not experienced the dangers in your area. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, help help others out. Yeah. Our first winter in Virginia, as, as, as native Southern Californians, our first winter in Virginia was a huge eye-opener. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when Watashi peed on a snowman. <laughs> yeah, it, it was. We had to apologize to the kid and build don't, him a new snowman. Don't eat yellow snow. <laughs> All right, on that note, I think we're going to leave you. <laughs> but I hope we provided some food for thought. So take care, take care of your dogs, love them, and we'll, we'll see you on our next podcast. Bye bye. Bye, bye there. Having a rough day? Longing for the dog days of summer? Think your fun furry friend lives a dog's life? Well, find out everything you're begging to know as Pet Life Radio presents It's a Doggy Dog World with pet expert and award-winning author Liz Palaika. Every dog has his day, and you'll find out how to make your dog's day fun and rewarding every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.